ان الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فقال عز وجل في محكم التنزيل الله نور السماوات والارض مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح فيه زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ظلي يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسس النار نور على نور يحد الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله أمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وقل الأقدة من الإنسان يفرق وقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حتى تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأن Today, inshallah, I will be going over a passage of the Quran that is a good, you can say, introduction to the month of Ramadan. And I hope that everyone is emotionally and emotionally prepared for the month because Ramadan this year, like last year, will have its toll. The passage of the Qur'an that I recited to you is a very famous one, but the understanding of this passage is rare. What does Allah mean by this passage is what I want to discuss. And how it relates to Ramadan, I also want to make that connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nur, Allahu nuru samawati wal awl. Allah is the nur, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. What does it mean? Imam Ibn Kathir in his tafsir narrated by Ibn Abbas when he explains this ayah in this way so that you get the actual understanding of this. Some people have commented to me, you know, oh Allah is nur, like his energy, his light. So you know Allah, this is not the meaning of the ayah. Allah is not limited to, you know, energy uh, in any way or sort. There's nothing like him of the world that we know. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nuru samawati wal ard. He is the light of the heavens and the earth. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh says, this meaning is fi qalbil mu'min. Ya'ni in the heart of the mu'min, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Over here, two terms are important to understand. One is Huda, the other is Nur. Huda is practical guidance, guidance as it plays out in your life. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Help me to practically act upon things in the right way. But Nur is an internal reality. Allah waliyu ladina amanu yukhriju min al dhulumat ila nur. Allah is the friend of the believers, He takes them out of darknesses into light. The many shades of darkness is into light. It's an internal reality. <coughs> the internal reality is how do you see the world around you? The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet said, Fear the insight of the believer because he sees with the light of Allah. So, light. Of Allah is an internal reality in the human consciousness. So nur is an internal reality. Huda, guidance is an external reality. How do you practically worship Allah? How do you practically go about doing things in the right choices? This is huda, this is guidance. So you have to have nur, you have to have an internal guidance. And you have to have an external guidance, which is which this ayah later on calls nurun ala nur, light upon light, which I will come to. 
Then Allah describes the heart of the believer. What is it like? Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And then I said within brackets, it's understood in the heart of the believer. Meaning he sees everything from the perspective that Allah wants him to see. Not just some statistical data mining type analysis. Not just some philosophy from Plato. But he uses the ayat of Allah, the book of Allah, to understand history as it's progressing. As an example. Or if he discovers, this is just as an example, if he discovers something, he doesn't think from the perspective, oh wow, I discovered something, let me see how much money I can make. Like if, you know, Thomas Edison discovered electricity, he made the big company. It's not about money, but it's about, oh wow, this is how Allah does things. It's about knowing and getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the believer's perspective of the universe internally, nurun yamshi bihi, nur that he walks with, as Allah says in another place in the Quran. So Allah describes the heart now. But to really understand this example, I wish I had a lamp of the old days. Because a lamp of the old days is given an example. And I wish I could turn off that the light on this room and you would see what it what it looks like when you turn on those old lantern lamps where you have to put in the oil. Remember that? And you just try to imagine that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, and then in brackets, in the heart of the mu'min. Now the heart of the mu'min is described. Kamishkatin fiha misbah. Al misbahu fihi zujaja. So just imagine this. If you ever uh, just think that there's a niche, there's a hole. You ever seen the walls where there's a hole and there's a lamp in the wall? You've seen, you've seen that, right? Maybe sometimes you saw it in TV where there is a like a hole, a placement where you can put in a lamp. A place, a hole where you can put in a lamp in the wall. So it's like this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard mathala nurihi. The example of his nur in the heart of the believer is kamishkatin fiha misbah al misbahu fihi zujaj. So there is a niche and there is a lamp in that and the lamp is covered with a glass. And what happens is, if this glass becomes dirty, then the light that is out inside this lamp doesn't come out. And if there is something that needs to come into the lamp to magnify it, which I will talk about, and Allah gives the example of, of something for this, but if nothing can go in and nothing from the internal light comes out. And so the example here is basically something very important and that is that human beings are born on a disposition. There is a priori knowledge within human beings, a certain light, a certain spark, a certain understanding of the world that a human being comes into the world with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. مَثَلَ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِسْبَاهُ الْمِسْبَاهُ فِيهِ زُجَاجَةٌ الزُجَاجَةُ كَأَنَّهَا كَوْكَبٌ ضُرِّيٌّ يُوْقَدُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ زَيْتُونَةٍ لَا شَرْقِيَةٍ وَلَا غَرْبِيَةٍ This glass, when it is in the heart of a believer, the glass itself is like, it's so clean, it's like it's shining like a star. So there is the light within the lamp, but even if the glass is so clean, like the, the heart has been so purified, it's like this case that's protecting that light has been so cleaned. So what happens in the case of a... Let me just uh, mention another verse of the Qur'an that will explain this. Don't become like those who, for, who forget Allah and then Allah for, causes them to forget themselves. What is it talking about? When this light that's within you, this spark, what is this light? Let me, this is the fitrah. For example, no one had to teach me as a young child to lie is wrong. There's certain things that I know are right and wrong just by being human being. No one had to teach it. That's a certain light within me, a certain idea within me. 
You know, all cultures, there's about 50 what they call in anthropology, 50 universals, 50 things that are true about all cultures, meaning it is, it, it is down to the core of what it means to be a human being. One of them is to respect knowledge, for example. This is what Imam Shafi said, his very famous statement after the event that happened. I can't go into the event, but I know now today, he says, that knowledge is light and Allah is light. After this event, he said this very, that everybody respects knowledge. Human beings seek, you know, one thing interesting about human beings is um, <coughs> When you ask a human being a question, the very idea of asking a question, and the other human being feels that he needs to respond to a question, is very core to what a human being is. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but I was just saying, we have a priori knowledge. We have knowledge that pre-exists, you can say. It's a certain light within us, according to the according to Quran. And we know that today, that human beings have a fitrah. We do have a certain nature. Across all cultures, we we all recognize what it means to be happy. It's not like a different culture has a different way of being happy. We all have the same 17 smiles, etc., etc. We all respect knowledge. We all look for wisdom. We all look for meaning. What is the purpose of life? Right? This life that guides us. One of the things it says, Allah said, I have, the person says, through Allah's words, this has not been created meaningless. Like, there has to be a purpose to this. And then another place, Allah says, Did you think we created you without any purpose? You know, nothing will happen to you? Does a man think that we will leave him alone, that he won't be questioned? So there are certain things that are embedded in human beings. We want things, our life to have purpose, our life to have meaningfulness. We understand the idea of justice. Even a little kid will say, that was not fair. You know, daddy's not being fair, or mommy's not being fair. Right? The concept of justice is embedded even in a child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nurus samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And this light that's within us, Allah says, for a believer, it's like there is a niche in which there is a lamp. And even the glass that covers this lamp, is so beautiful, it's like a blazing star. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, you know, uh, about the ayah, I was saying, Don't be like those people who forget Allah, and then Allah for makes you forget yourself. Meaning, not the body, you know, nobody forgets their body. Right? It, there's something that, uh, one of the psychologists, uh, he's a Muslim actually, he was a, student of a very famous psychologist and he uh, was teaching, uh, his name was Muhammad Mahdi, he was a psychologist, he was teaching in um, Islamic University of Malaysia and he has some very great works where he, ex he has some, he has a great life, he, he was a communist, he was in jail, he was a student of, I think it was Pavlov, um, uh, not Pavlov, um, Skinner, sorry, Skinner, he was a student of Skinner. He was a communist, he was in jail in Australia for many, many years. <laughs> Finally he found Islam, he went to University of Malaysia, started teaching there, and he, he, he extended what Skinner, the, he's a famous psychologist, what Skinner had come up with, he extended it and made a whole lecture series, which I have at home because I was very interested in that. But one of the things that human beings have is self-talk, right? We talk to ourselves, right? And I'm not... So there's a part of us that talks to us based upon this light that's within us. It talks to us based upon, I should have done this. You feel guilty if you do something wrong. It's talking to you. Something is, you have this self-talk. Don't be like those people who, if they forget Allah, they forget themselves. And how this happens, I've actually given a long lecture. How this process happens, how do you forget your inner self? There's actually a process to this. And... But the point I'm trying to say is that you can start doing things where that light, that glass that's being mentioned in this ayah gets covered so much, you don't even see that light in the inside. You're, 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 your own self doesn't talk to you anymore. And all you see is everything materialistic. It's like you've become blind from the inside. The eye of the inside, you can say, that could see when it becomes darkened, the glass is darkened, no longer see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Mathala nunihi. So in the in the heart of the believer, Allah is the light. That's how he sees everything. He sees everything as Allah wants you to see everything. Right? Mathala nunihi ka mishkatin fiha misbah al misbah fihi zujaja. Al zujaja tu ka anna hakul kauka ful dhuri yuqadu shajarati mubarakatin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the oil. Okay? This is very important. You know, because, um, you know, um, like when you uh, put gas in your car, you ever notice your nozzle goes down instead of being straight or going up? That's because of you need to ground it so it doesn't catch on fire. Okay? You need to ground the oil because it can catch on fire very easily. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the oil, the oil is such that, you know, if some spark even comes near to it, it's going to, it's gonna, it's gonna blaze out. So if that light is there and it's alive, right, and that oil is there, then if something from the outside, another nur comes in contact with it, it's going to shine out. And so this is what Allah is saying. Allah is saying, you have that light within you, but then there's another light from the outside that comes into the glass and makes it spark even greater and more brighter. And this is what Allah says, Nurun ala What is that nur? That comes from the outside into the heart and then makes it blaze like a lamp, like a sun. And that oil is like shajaratin mubaraka, it's like a blessed tree. Shajaratin mubaraka tin zaytunatin, it's of olive oil. La shariyatin wa la It is not of the east or the west, it doesn't come from philosophies of the East or philosophies of the West or ideas of the East or ideas of the West. It isn't it is something that is being it is timeless and spaceless. And Allah says, Kauka Bundurri yu yukadu min shadaratin mubaraka tin zaytuna til la shariyati wala garbiya ya kadu zaytuha yu diu wala ulam tamsasu now. Even though it has not been sparked sparked up, but when it touches this, it's it it's, it becomes illuminated. Which sometimes people in the in the early 19th century used to use this word. Nowadays, people use the word progress, progressive, to be progressive. But about a hundred years ago, the main word used to be to be enlightened, to get enlightened. This is what nur is: to be enlightened. What is an enlightened human being? An enlightened human being, according to Quran, is the one whose fitra is intact, whose light is still intact, and his glass is clean, like the Prophet ﷺ said. It is a very interesting correlation. I'll share with you very quickly. Um, the Prophet وسلم, said that when you, when somebody does a sin, what happens to the heart? It gets a black spot, right? And that's true for every heart. And for the whole ummah, it's true with the black stone. What happens with the black stone? When you sin, when we sin as a community, the black stone gets blacker, right? Same same word is used. Except in the uh, in the hadith, when it refers to the heart, it, it, it uses the what we can say the the the, the, dim, the diminished word of it, like the watered down word of it. But when you lie, the heart gets black, and then it gets black again and black again. So what happens? That glass that's supposed to be clean, so that it can receive the guidance, it gets black, and then guidance doesn't go into that heart. And so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu nurus samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth and the heart of the believer. And the example of this light is this light that's in him is like a niche in which there's a lamp and there's a glass over it. And the glass is clean and shining and bright. And it's it's so sensitive to truth. It's so sensitive to reality that it just knows so much that it if light was to come to it, it would just become illuminated. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ النَّارِ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ What is that other nur? That's the Qur'an. When a person hears the Qur'an, the light that goes in from the Qur'an, because what's the closest thing to the heart? The closest thing to the heart is the Qur'an. This is why Qur'an is essentially meant to be heard and listened to. حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ I mean this qira also, but qira is not accepted until even in salah, by the way. If you read salah and you can't hear your own fatiha, it's not, it's not, the Bible, you have to be able to hear what you're saying. 
And so, this is like one of the, especially Imam Shafi, this is an absolute requirement according to him. Your prayers are not accepted if you don't hear yourself. Because you have to put the, the vibrations into your ears. And the closest things to the ears is the, is the, is, is the, the closest thing to the heart is the ear. Anyway, uh, I was saying, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, uh, let me just uh, finish this off in a very uh, fast way, and then I'll, we'll start in my second khutbah. وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْ سَسْ نُورٌ عَلَىٰ نُورٌ Light upon light. There's the light internally, and then the light from the outside comes out, from the outside inside your heart. Now it becomes illuminated. If the heart is clean, which Quran mentions in the beginning, هُدَلِّلْ مُتَّقِينَ It is guidance for people who have... It has to be some that you have to let the light be in. If that mirror, if that glass is dirty, the light's not going to go in. The Quran's not going to affect that person. But on the other hand, in another place in Quran, which I will describe later, it says something interesting in, 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 in respect to this. So Allah says, يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ مَنْ And Allah guides to His nur whoever desires to be guided. So the very least, minimum, how much... You, you know, because our problem, uh, which I'll discuss in Shalom in the second khutbah, Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu, nasta'inuhu, nasta'inuhu Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Faqala azza wa jal Allahu nuru al-samawati wal-ard Mathala nurihi ka mishkatin fiha misbah Al-misbahu fihi zujaja Al-zujaja tu ka annaha kawkabun durri Yuqadu min shajaratin mubarakatin زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد ضيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسس النار نور على نور. This ولو لم تمسس النار by the way it's like something gets on fire even before it. You know how if there's fire the gas will catch fire even before the fire touches the gas. This is what Allah is referring to. ولو لم تمسس النار even though the fire has not touched it but it becomes illuminated. Just by the nearness of that fire to that gas. So this is what Allah is saying, that when the heart is clean, when that lamp of light inside you and the glass that's around it is clean, then even when that light of Qur'an comes near you, it's as if you become illuminated. This is what the effect of Ramadan should be on us. That if we get close to Qur'an in the month of Ramadan, first of all, by doing sayyam, by doing fasting, it's like you're cleaning the glass. It's like you're cleaning the mirror. Because you're doing something in obedience to Allah. It's like you're cleaning the mirror. And then at night, you're standing and you're letting the light of Qur'an come to you. So you become illuminated. You become enlightened. And you become enlightened to the point that it affects your emotions. And then your emotions drive you to a certain action, which is, should be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسُسْكُمْ نَارٌ نُورٌ عَلَىٰ نُورٌ Then now the two, now notice, Nur is always in singular. The plural of Nur is Anwar. The plural of Nur, meaning many lights, is Anwar. Nur is always, guidance is guidance. So, نُورٌ عَلَىٰ نُورٌ Guidance upon guidance, because the light, the knowledge of guidance that's within us, is confirmed by the guidance that's without us. Meaning Qur'an tells you don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't murder. All of that's already in you. It's the same guidance. The difference is not to not do these things. The difference comes into other aspects which I'm not going to go into right now. But that guidance. So, when Abu Bakr hears Qur'an or Omar hears Qur'an, it illuminates him from the inside. This is exact. This is what I believe in anyway. This is when you talk to non-Muslims, you become used to this, right? Because everybody says, oh... Oh, I don't believe in cheating and I don't believe in lying. Everybody believes in the same thing, in, in the sense of their fitrah, in the sense of their human nature. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, dam sasuna, When that light of guidance comes near you, you become illuminated. Yasha. Allah guides to his nur, whoever he desires. Whoever desires, both meanings are correct. 
One meaning of this is Allah guides to His Nur whoever Allah desires. Because man yasha, man here is Allah, or man here is the person. Man yasha, Allah guides whoever He wills to His light. Or the other is man yasha, Allah guides to His light whoever is desiring to be guided to His light. You can say what is the example of Omar? The other is an example of Abu Bakr. Allah forced Umar into Islam, you can say, by the dua of the Prophet. And then Abu Bakr, he just heard the Quran for a few seconds and he said, I believe. Allah says, I give exam I'm giving this parable for human beings. Why do you give an example to somebody? You give an example to somebody because it, there is a concept that's too hard to, for, to understand. And when there's a concept that's too hard to understand, the only way to explain a concept that's difficult to understand is by giving an example. Something similar. Something that's congruent, but not exact. So Allah says, this is an example. Allah sets forth an example for mankind. But Allah knows everything. He doesn't need this example for Himself. He's giving this example for you. You're the one who needs to understand this. Allah already knows the reality of the things. So Allah is giving here a parable of the human heart that is that is salim al that is a good heart, a good heart that's ready to receive guidance. Now having said this, time is running out. Let me just mention this. So what does it mean for the month of Ramadan? For the month of Ramadan it means, well one thing I want to mention is inshallah I will be talking every day after 4 o'clock. 10 to tw you know, 12, 15 minutes, not more than that, inshallah. But I'll go over the summary, which is not possible. But I will be giving a summary of the, each juz every day. What is being discussed and why Fatiha comes first. Why Ali Imran comes second. I mean, why Bakra comes second. Why Ali Imran comes after uh, Surah al -Bakra. What are the themes within? How are they interconnected with one another? How do the different threads, they meet each other? What is the flow of Quran? What is the what makes Quran coherent as a subject? Which how does Quran with what assumptions does Quran start with, for example? So anyway, these are some of the things that I'll be discussing, you know, every every day, inshallah, if Allah wills, 12 minutes, 15 minutes after the four rakah, please try to pay because this is the Quran, this is the word of Allah, and this is what I want to say. Look, in the same verse, in the same surah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. <laughs> Do not be like those people who forget Allah and the result of forgetting Allah is you forget your own reality. You forget that there's, there is a ruh, that there is a day of judgment, that you have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> they are the evildoers. Then Allah says after one ayah, <laughs> If we had sent down this Qur'an on a mountain, even if your heart is as hard as a rock, even if your heart is as hard as a mountain, and over here I want to share with you something interesting. Very, very important. So you understand the value of Qur'an. You see, the mutakallim, the one who talks, my speech is a sifa is a quality of me. When somebody talks, if let's say he's from the village, his, his speech is a quality of his. You cannot separate the personality, the, the, personal, the speech of the person from the person. That speech of that person, you can tell, oh, this is an intelligent person, oh, he's an emotional person, whatever it is. You can tell the qualities of a person from his or her speech. When Musa والسلام, said to Allah, Arini, I want to see you. Allah, I want to see you. Allah said to Musa, والسلام, you can't love the Rani, you can't see me. You can't see me. But if this mountain can bear me, if this mountain can bear me, so that the Rani then soon you can make. You see me too? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested himself on the mountain. And when the mountain got destroyed. And over here, Allah is, that is the person, the Zat of Allah, the being of Allah. Allah manifested Himself on the mountain. And I've been to that place and I've seen that crushed mountain. Anyway, that's a separate issue. But 
But then over here, Allah is saying, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا Because the mutakallim, the mutakallim, the person who is speaking, and his kalam cannot be separated. They are both have the same qualities. And therefore, Allah says this very interesting. And by the way, when Alama Iqbal was asked, where did he get his whole philosophical idea of the khudi? Where does the idea of the khudi come from? These are the verses that Alama Iqbal told his student to look at. Do not be like